Welcome to NHD Photo. Uh, this is a DIY video on how to take a vintage flash and turn it into a strobe. Uh, now I have here an old Vivitar 550FD. Now the voltage on this is 10.2 volts. Now with most uh, new DSLR cameras their voltage is around 6 volts or so and are usually low because you don't need that much to trigger the flash anymore. Um, and so I, I would not recommend taking any vintage flash that you may have and attaching it to your new DSLR camera. Um, most of these flashes now, like this one, can, are going on the internet for very cheap. Um, you know, less than twenty dollars in a lot of cases. So here's the question, which would you rather risk? Your you know, thousand dollar or so camera or a less than twenty dollar flash. I think the you know, it's it's obvious what you want to go for, which is uh hopefully you picked your, your camera. Anyway, uh so I wouldn't recommend hooking these up directly to your camera as there is a possibility that you could damage your hot shoe or some other internal component. So what I recommend is to use this as an optical slave um, and use it like a strobe almost. Now to do this you would need something like this and what this is, I don't know if you can see it, ooh, uh, what this is is basically an optical trigger and uh, this uh, I got from uh, Cowboy Studio is the brand even though it's a no-name brand. Um, I'm sure it's made in China never made by any cowboys. But anyway, um, SYK-3 Optical Slave Trigger, that's what this is. And it even has a PC uh, sync port on the side. Um, I do have some other ones here that I've gotten over the years. It's another optical trigger I got. Now this one uh, I got off the internet and it was uh, relatively cheap. I think I paid a few dollars for it off of eBay, um, and that's what it looks like. Uh, it's not that great. It's okay, but uh, it it's hit and miss with with this one because it, it, the optical sensor is behind this weird um, milk um, jug type plastic, and then the sensor sitting out slightly from the actual pedestal which means that if you're angled wrong it actually won't pick up on the light so this is okay but I would go with something like this it has that nice dome on it which you know sets the uh, sensor properly so it can pick up on all angles you got that nice dome that picks it up on all angles so that's a nice feature of this and it has a standard um, one-fourth uh, tripod mount. So does this one too. Okay. Uh, another option you have is actually, now I don't recommend actually attaching these to your camera again, you know, even though it's, a, it's called a safe sync, um, unless you don't have a PC sync port on your camera and you want one and you're just going to use a PC sync port, but even then you're relying on something that's less than 50 bucks. Um, this is Hama. I, I didn't come up with a name, but that's, this is one of them. There's another one, I think called Win, and that one uh, is around 50 or so dollars, what I've, I've seen. Uh, that one has gotten good reviews, but again, I mean, you're taking, you're relying on something that's around $50 to take an old vintage flash voltage down to six volts and you know um, it's it's really it's up to you whether you want to use something like this also it's setting the uh, flash up higher it could compromise the foot on the, the actual flash depending on what it's made out of um, so there's several options you can get a, a safe sync if you want to hook it directly up to your camera that's not something I would recommend and if you don't have an external flat strobe, you've never had one, this is a cheap way of doing it. For what I've got here, less than $20, if you don't have a flash, 
okay? If you don't have a vintage flash, you can get one for, like I said, less than 20 bucks. So about 20 to 30, let's just say, safely. You can get a flash and the stuff I have here and make uh, a strobe. Now, that that's not including the uh, strobe stand, but even those, and I will see what I can find, but even those you can get for relatively cheap. Uh, some of those range for around $20 for uh, the lower end ones, and you don't need a, a heavy duty one because this is a fairly light flash. Uh, most of the vintage ones, you know, you can put on a regular uh, cheap aluminum stand. And if you don't have a stand, uh, you can also use a tripod. If you have an aluminum tripod, some of those you can get for less than $20 there's your solution because it's going to work in the same fashion. Um, <clears throat> but for this part here you would need a stand um, because of the way it connects. Uh, one thing that will be a benefit is this right here. Now this is also by Cowboy Studio. It's a flash and hot shoe umbrella holder um, with a swivel and tilt bracket. I'm going by the name they gave it. Um, but basically it's so that you can set your flash up here, put an umbrella here, either your diffuser uh, umbrella or your reflector, and use it as a strobe. So this is kind of a cool device I got, and I think I, this was really not that expensive. I, I think it's going for a lot cheaper than what I got it too. Less than this is uh, going for around two to twelve dollars, depending on where you get it. Not that expensive at all. And it's, it's fairly decent. It's plastic. It's not metal. But um, you're not going to be putting anything huge on it, so that's not really a big deal. Uh, so what this does is it has a clamp here. You're going to take your optical um, hot shoe and put that there and clamp it in. So you have that. Then you just take your uh, strobe. Well, it would be good if I unwound it. Take your strobe, put that in there like that, and crank it down. And there you go. So now, you would need a stand for this, okay? But if you don't have a stand, all right, now this would be direct light because there wouldn't be an, un and the umbrella adapter is on here, so you can put an umbrella. But if you don't have this, you can, because this has a uh, standard um, tripod mount, you can actually take this and just put it on a tripod um, and bounce flash it, or have something in front of it, and I have a device I'll show you, if that's all you've got that you can like use. Like I said, if you don't have a, um, a stand, then you can use a tripod and get something like this, which is a simple little light box uh, that you can attach to the front of the flash. This one has a little rubber band, it's from Opteca. Um, I don't think it was that. It's like a little bit more than ten dollars for this. But it has a Velcro strap for tightening it down. Uh, since this flash is a little odd angled, it's probably not going to be perfect. But it's got a rubber band on there that you put around the flash so it grips it. So if it's not a perfect fit, that's okay. But that'll give you something like this. And this will diffuse it so you won't have harsh light. It'll be a diffused, almost give it a light box type uh, lighting um, appearance. So that's one option. And again, you're keeping this on the cheap. You know, you're keeping this uh, with this. I mean, still, you're, you're less than $40. And if you can't afford a strobe right now, not everybody can. You know, this is an option. Okay. Uh, now, what I'm going to show you, I have my camera right here. I'm going to actually take and show you how this works. I'm going to set it up. have a, a stand here. This is a fairly inexpensive stand that I use for some of my lighting. Okay, and 
and then you take this. Oh, would help if I was in frame. You take this. Ooh, goes right on there like that. Now you can use a diffuser umbrella like this, or not diffuser. This one's a reflective umbrella. I have a diffuser umbrella, but it's being occupied by my hot light because um, I didn't feel like putting the light box together for it. Um, so you can put this on here like this, reflective lighting. But uh, I think it'll defeat the purpose, and you won't be able to see what it does. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the small little area that I'm in. All right, so it's powering up, and I'm going to turn my camera on. Now I set. I usually set uh, depending on what I'm trying to do. Uh, you have to set your your uh, your onboard flash for manual. Um, the reason being is that if you use ETTL, uh, the pre-flash for your main flash, the the pre-flash, there's a slight pre pre-flash from your uh, ETTL flash will trigger this prematurely. So because the sink picks up on the light, you have to use basically manual, which doesn't have the pre-flash. So set your flash for manual. Depending on you, if you're using this as an assist light or if you want this to be your main light, uh, set your uh, flash accordingly. And I would recommend setting it to 1 64th if you don't want this to affect the lighting really at all. Uh, another option, if you have a PC sync port on your camera, you can run a cable from here to this uh, device because it does have a PC sync uh, port on the side. So you can either set it up, set it off optically, or through the PC sync port. And the beautiful thing about this is that it runs off the power of your flash, so you don't need another uh, battery uh, or some other, you know, battery to worry about uh, going dead. So that's another beautiful thing about these little devices is they're cheap and they don't have their own uh, power source. They run off the flash and they don't take that much power so you don't have to worry about it draining the battery of your flash prematurely. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you, uh, hopefully this works, I'm going to set off through the pilot light my uh, flash here and it should fire this one. goes this one fired as well I can I heard it and I saw it <laughs> so uh, basically you wait until this is charged and there you go you've got another um, source of light if you don't have a strobe this is an ex excellent uh, alternative um, you know I would say splurge a little doesn't cost that much really for a light stand that way you can get this device and use it uh, with a reflective umbrella uh, which again, reflective umbrellas you can get for under $10, or a diffusing umbrella, which will give you a light box uh, appearance. Uh, reflective is a little bit more, it's harsher light, but it's still uh, diffused a bit, it's good, it's broken up a bit. Um, and the other thing is you can manually set these flashes, they have manual controls on the back, they're not the, that uh, sophisticated, but at least you have some manual controls just like you would on a stroke. Um, output may vary because you know all these strobes were different or all these flashes were different um, some have better output than others I have another one here made by Phoenix now this one I got online this was real cheap um, flash um, it really doesn't have any controls whatsoever except for a little slide in the front that is a manual version of what your main flash can do which sets the um, focal length. So you have to do that manual, manually on this, but that can help you know, with the uh, lighting a little bit. So this is a cheap flash that I got for less than 20 bucks and um, really haven't used that much. I've used the Vivitar a lot more um, when I need it. Of course, I do have strobes as well, um, but this is a great alternative if you want something quick and easy and cheap. That's a, another thing is, you know, not everybody can afford to have, a, you know, uh, all these slave flashes that, you know, sometimes cost uh, around $200 or more. 
uh, depending on what you get. But if you're getting basically the brand of your camera version, it's not going to be cheap. Um, and also going out and getting strobes. I mean, a lot of the strobes are expensive. And if you're just starting out and you're experimenting and you want something that's cheap, you know, easy to set up and effective, this is a great alternative, you know. Um, but I will be posting uh, on this video all the links to get everything you'll need to set this up, minus the strobe. Um, and also I have a, uh, on my website, nhdphoto.com, uh, there is actually a uh, chart on there in the links section under Learning Center uh, for the different voltages of these flashes. So it, it tells you that this one, was, that's how I found out this was 10.2 volts. Uh, it goes down the list. There's a quite a list of flashes that this uh, site covers and it will tell you, you know, basically every um, voltage, voltage imaginable so you understand and, and know uh, what you're dealing with. Um, so yeah, I will have all that up, have the links down below. Hope you enjoyed the video, and hope you get some use out of this. Thanks for watching, and please visit my website, nhdphoto.com. Thank you.